Hello everybody. I hope you're doing alright. I know I am. This is the second of my vlogs, so I'm really excited about it. For those of you who don't know me, I have a condition called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is a progressive muscle wasting disease. You can find out more about me if you go to my Facebook page, Not Wasted with Tom Hardwick, because you'll know all you need to know about me from that. And through that you can access my last vlog. What I'm going to be talking about today is kind of, I guess, assumptions about disability and how that can cause barriers to relationships. So I'll give you a few instance, instances of assumptions that I've had. Some of them are from, from kids, um, which are extra funny. Um, I understand that with kids, they still need to learn a lot. But it just goes to show that from an early age, you can have those assumptions. Um, so one of them was that I can't read. Um, just so you know, I do have a do degree, so I can read. <laughs> but um, I, was, I was helping a lad out, I think he was about eight at the time. And we are playing something called Top Trumps just a card game. Um, so it was good. I was enjoying myself. And then he said to me, Tom, I'll help you I'll help you do you, your cards because you can't read. And I was like stunned for a moment, like, I can read. Um I didn't say anything. I wanted to be polite and nice. <laughs> um he didn't understand. So that was a bit awkward. Another assumption that I've had is you can't talk. So I was celebrating graduating and I was sat with my dad and there were two other kids on, at the table and I'd been quiet for about five minutes, I hadn't said a word and then I spoke up and they went, he can talk like that. I don't know if you've ever seen Shrek um, where, um, where donkeys flying and they go he can talk, because he starts talking as well. It was a bit like that. Very, very strange assumption. But he was a kid. But as I said, they do come up from early ages. So I was kind of uh, a bit embarrassed about that. Then another assumption that I've seen, not from what somebody said directly as, as such, but I could see from what she was saying that it was implied without her realising it. Um, so, and the implicate, the thing that she, I think she thought was that I had a younger mind than I actually do. So, I was at a place called Kingdom Faith, a big Christian festival, let's say. And in one of the main tents, there were some, like, couple of people throwing these toy planes about. So, not just paper airplanes, actual toy planes and um, I thought they were pretty cool it was uh, it's not something you see every day so I said to the girl who was with me hey look at those planes they're really cool aren't they and she said do you like planes and I kind of wasn't expecting that response because it's something you might say to someone a lot younger we're both the same age like I was 14 she was 13 <laughs> and I was like no don't particularly like planes. I just thought it was interesting that they were throwing toy planes about. Then another assumption I've had is that your life must suck. I was this happened in church unfortunately, um, where uh, a guy did this wonderful preach. This minister, it was beautiful. Then he came up to me at the end of the service and he. He just said, to, I thought he was going to say something chatty, like, hey, what's your name? Or, you know, as the kind of things you say, what church do you go to? Instead, he said, if I ever had more about me, I'd tell you to get out of that wheelchair. Um, and that's nice that he wanted me to be healed, but it's not the first thing I wanted him to say. Then he said, what's wrong with you? So I explained what I've explained to you, that I have a muscle wasting disease. And he said... Oh, that must suck. And the problem is, 
Yes, it is difficult having Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Yes, it's not enjoyable. Yes, there's some real tough times. But my life doesn't suck. Um, and that was really hard. <clears throat> so it's like people see the disability and they have these different assumptions. Let me give you uh, an analogy. Let's say a car busts its headlights. You don't assume that the engine doesn't work. Or let's assume that the tyres don't work properly. They've completely exploded. It doesn't mean that the air conditioning doesn't work. And in the same way, when you see someone with a disability, just because one aspect isn't quite working as it should, it doesn't mean that all the rest has fallen apart at all. For me, inability to walk doesn't mean inability to speak, and inability to speak doesn't mean inability to think. You can't make those assumptions. Um, and similarly, just because somebody looks like they're completely okay on the outside doesn't mean they actually are. Let's go back to the car analogy. If the car's really shiny, it's got spoilers on it and go faster stripes, don't automatically think that the engine works properly. The bits there inside might not be. So what I'm saying is just don't make assumptions about things or they're walking, they can talk, that means everything's perfectly fine. We can of often hide things with our smiles. We are very good at that as human beings, hiding what's hidden, hiding the things that aren't working so, so well. So I guess how that might come about, someone might have a mental illness, um, maybe depression, and maybe you don't see them at the rock bottom, so you might think they're perfectly okay, like, oh, they're fine when I see them the other day, I was, there was time then. But actually, it can be so hidden, these different disabilities. And I would say that, really, we're all disabled in some way. What I'm trying to say is, you can't separate people out. You've got the disabled people and the people that are all fine. <laughs> Actually, I think we can be emotionally disabled. We can be spiritually disabled. Spiritually disabled by maybe not spending time with God. I don't know. But I think that the way to view it is that we've all got these things that don't quite work properly. And that's okay. We just need to encourage each other in that and not see each other as, oh, there are those people over there that aren't quite right. One of my biggest phrases at the moment is that accessibility of the heart is of the utmost importance. So let me give you examples of um, things that, ways that our hearts aren't accessible. One of them is Focusing on the disability. For instance, I've been asked so many times if I've got a driving licence for my wheelchair. And people are trying to be nice, but I just find it really annoying because it's the first thing that's seen. That's what it seems like. I think that when seeing a disabled person and you know they're disabled, I think don't straight away ask people about their disability because if you do that from the offset it suggests that that's all you're bothered about. First, build relationships like put on the scrap pile your expectations when you see someone with a disability and start from the, from the very beginning. Build the relationship first because that's the most important and if you want to ask about the disability I'm sure that's fine. Just do it appropriately, politely, sensitively. And after you've, you've been bothered about the person behind the disability. Because that is so important. I think another thing is that another way our hearts cannot be accessible is by actively avoiding conversation with disabled people. 
We might do that knowingly or unknowingly. For instance, there's been times, like at church for instance, where I've seen a group of people talking in one part of the room and uh, I've gone up to speak to them and their assumption is that I wanted to get past when actually all I wanted to do was talk to them. You see, they didn't knowingly think, oh, we're going to avoid him. They unknowingly avoided conversation with me as a disabled person. And I think we have to not be afraid and, and not shy away from talking to people. I think that's so important. And then fi finally, what I'm going to speak about today, but by not mean there's more than these three. I think only focusing on caring for the physical needs of someone who is disabled can can be a bit of a barrier, can make people feel a bit separate. You can have lifts and wide doors and ramps and you can open doors for disabled people and move chairs for them. But if all you do is care about these physical needs but never I never bothered about building a relationship, then I've got to say there's a, there's a problem there. It's so important that it's so easy to, I guess, make people a project. Like, I need to, as a Christian, to be open to other people. I need to, I need to be charitable. But we're not, disabled people aren't necessarily your charity or you can be nice to them and do those things, but you've got to have that relationship there as well. I think it's so important, imperative, that we see the person behind the disability. And just by having those physical things doesn't mean that you're prepared for disabled people, because as I've mentioned probably a couple of times, disability isn't just a physical thing. You've got people with, who aren't in wheelchairs, but have different things like, I don't know, autism. Like, you might not physically see anything, but you still need to be open to them. And that's what I'm saying, really. That, one, you've got to focus on the relationship, and two, disability <laughs> isn't just that physical thing. So to summarise, Disability is an extremely wide spe spectrum, so you can't merely put people in a box and say, this is how a disabled person is, this is how they act, this is how they are. We need to let go of our expectations and our assumptions, I would say. I guess we all at times make judgments of people, whether they're disabled or not. Um, it's human nature to do that. So... I get that it's difficult and I don't want you to feel guilty if you've done these things <laughs> as I'm speaking to you because I just want to be an encouragement and a support so don't be afraid or anything just just listen to what I'm saying and, and be encouraged that's what I'm saying I'm not trying to hit anybody over the head with anything and saying you've done bad or anything like that if you've had any experiences um, at all that I've spoke of where someone, if you're a disabled person and people have approached you and saw their disability first or if you've, you're not disabled but you've seen, you've seen it happen I'd really be glad if you would ask me any questions or talk to me because as I mentioned in my first blog post I want this to be an interactive thing. I hope that what I've said today has uh, struck a chord with you and I hope that I haven't bored you. Um, if you have fallen asleep, wake up now. It's done. <laughs> well, thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.